So, hello everybody. And today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I use my power float. So, this is my Rafina power float. Uh, it's a corded one. Um, I didn't have the luxury of being able to get the one with the battery, but it's good, it's great. And I'm gonna talk you through some bits and bats and how I use it, why I love it, and why I think it's a must have for anyone who does any type of rendering outside, especially thin coat render. So, as you can see, I've sped this up a bit because the video would have been mega long, but I sped it up. Uh, I don't actually move this fast, although I wish I did. But anyway, this uh, power flow, what it does basically is helps you finish the wall. So this wall's already been put on, it's been ruled, it's been flattened and everything like that already. And I've just literally gone over, over uh, a spat to make sure it's opened up a little bit. And then what I'm doing is I'm just going to rub a, a sponge over it with the float to make sure that it gives me a nice even finish everywhere, ready to take primer and then the texture. So I see it's it's quite easy on the hands to use, really. It's a bit hard on the shoulders at first, but, you know, if you train or if you when you've done a few jobs with it, you know, your shoulders get conditioned to it. It's not heavy, but all I do is I just use it to float over the surface. That's all it's doing. There's not much moisture on the wall. All I'm doing is just floating over, getting the wall consistent. This is a good uh, angle here, really, that I'm showing you. Um, and just showing you like how I can just up and down, round and round. It don't matter which direction you go. All you're doing is getting the consistency there. And if you can just see, as this moves along, you'll notice that I'm just literally changing it from being like, you know, where the, where the spats have been and where the trowel's been running over it. It's just making everything uniform. Look at that, left to right. It's quite therapeutic, to be fair, when you're doing it. Get your headphones in and just go for it. Um, the noise that comes off it is quite loud, I'll be honest with you. Um, so if you have it right in exterior and you're rubbing up for afternoon or for morning, it's uh, a little bit of a pain in the backside. So I recommend putting some headphones in or getting some ear defenders or something like that. But yeah, you can use different types of floats on this. You can get a diamond float, you can get a thinner sponge, you can get thicker sponges. Um, you'll find by trying them all which one works best for you. Um, I like this sponge, it's, it's quite thick and I just think it's... I don't know, it's got, it can hold a bit of moisture inside it without being soaking. Now, I wouldn't you, if you were using this, you'd know exactly what I mean. But I haven't wet this wall at all since putting it on. I've just opened it up and come back to it in the afternoon. And this is Eco Rendex 32 I'm using. And this is absolutely a dream to sponge up with power float. But as you can see, look there, I'm going side to side, up and down. And it's just, it's just floating over it. That's basically what we're doing, we're floating it up. Yeah, that is it. Look at it. Absolutely great piece of kit. You can get them on their website, uh, Rafina's website. Go on there and, um, yeah, They're getting more popular these, these days, but they've been out for a long time. I know there's cheaper alternatives, but um, this really is the daddy, the best one. So, yeah, look, guys, that's me for the commentary. I've actually got a little bit of me talking about the difference with sponges, uh, power floats and sponges coming up right now. If you think about, let's say, the sponge like this, yeah? When you're rubbing a wall up, it's small, so the surface ain't that big. You don't have to cover much surface, yeah? So, if I'm rubbing up this wall, it's only going to, well, it's a bit wet, that's to do, yeah? We get some water off that, I don't want to bring it right back to life. And it's not the best sponge, it's a bit knack. Um, but it'll do. So yeah, let's just say I'm rubbing this wall. I'll do it behind here, it's a bit drier. Like only covers that area there, yeah. And let's just say this is something that we've all done, right? Let's just say there's a little indentation in the wall. It's quite easy for you to just go like that, tilt it a little bit more in it. We've all done it. Everyone does it when you're first starting out, definitely. Until you realise what it looks like after. <laughs> but yeah, it's easy enough to just go. Oh, there's a little bit of collar there. I'll just tilt my sponge a little bit, thick spongy. And it'll make it all look uniform, it'll all look like it's been rubbed. It'll all look like it's been rubbed. Because you're using a little sponge, you can do that, right? But you know, when you render it or you paint it, it's gonna show up. Not a big area with these. 
but when you've got a big sponge Differences with this compared to this is that you can't really push the corner of this in because it's round for one, don't have corners, and also if you push it in too much, it's going to chuck that full part of the wall out because it just don't stop grafting. Whereas with this, you can quite easily go and blend a little hole in. With this, you can't, but you don't need to because it's so big, it moves fat from everywhere around the wall to sponge it up lovely for you. So that's why it's another good thing. The beauty of it, it's bigger. It can fill in voids for you quicker, um, especially with the diamond float. Uh, you know, if you're putting something on, if you want to get it passed into in same day, I'd recommend using diamond float. But if you're skimming something, you just want to get it finished, you can still use diamond, but I use the sponge. It's just quicker, quicker. Fills in anything quicker and brings it back to life a little bit if it needs it. And for me, that's it. I was like doing it like that, but yeah. Remember, these guys are good, um, but they're a bit harder to, to keep more consistent. Um, whereas this is a big face. I mean, how many times is it bigger? Five times, four or five times bigger. Makes sense. But yeah, great bit of kit. Put it on. pissing me off about this part is that and that's where I, said, I don't know it want me to whack it someone's whacked the bead there but yeah that's how you use a power float that's why i use them it's pretty hard on the shoulder at first if you haven't worked out or if you haven't used one before um it is quite physical and um, to move it up and down um the main aim I'll give you some tips. The main thing that I use, the main aim to make it easier on my body, is not to be power floating up wet gear. Um, if the gear is more or less gone, you're just gliding over the surface, and it makes it a lot easier on your body. But if you're mixing, if you're doing it on the wall that's wet, obviously you're not going to get it flat. For starters, you're not going to get it proper flat because it's wet. But it also makes it work a bit more because you're more or less mixing it up on the wall with sponge, which is not a good finish. Don't look good. Just have confidence in waiting for it to go that little bit longer. Have confidence in waiting for it to, to, to pull in a little bit more. Um, especially when I'm using X32, I can do that. Um, with EcoRend X32, you can leave it till it's more or less gone. You think it's gone, and it ain't. You just put a bit of water on, and you can go over it. It's absolutely one of the best base coats for sponging up. Um, yeah, it's great. So I recommend Eco, uh, EcoRend X32 for that reason. Especially if you're doing big jobs, um, for louses, you can go around, base them all out, rule them up, mesh them, walk away, come back next day, skim it up, and it's a beauty to finish. That's how I'd recommend using it. But yeah, that's how I use the power float. Got two of these, and the cost, yeah, um, can't be, I'm not exact on it. I was looking at them the other day because I was looking to get a cordless one, but these are from Rafina, and they are about 400 quid, um, give or take, uh, plus that. So give or take, uh, depending on which one you go for. But yeah, good. One of the best investments I've made is one of them. Uh, I know there's cheaper ones out there that are like 100 quid, 200 quid. And I've heard good things about them. I've heard they're all right. But if you want the best, the best of the best, you want to go with Rafina one. That's the best float you can get. Um, Rafina has made the best tools. Though. They're really like mega mixers, scrabblers. So I've got the mega mixer, I've got the scrabbler, I've got two power floats. Um, yeah got quite a lot of Rafina stuff so yeah check them out go on the website they're there but yeah i hope this helps you if you are thinking about getting a power float go get one from there and if you are you know struggling when to use it and stuff like that like i say to you with sponges let it get more or less um gone off and then just boot over it quickly and um if you're doing the same day uh floating out meshing and want to top it get a diamond diamond face for it and uh, get over it with that they're the best they're the best way that i use them two um discs for the the power float 
so anyway i hope that helps you out if it does help you out listen you know what to do subscribe give us a subscription and um you know like some of our videos and uh, yeah i hope to bring you more tips more tricks and more tools that i use and how i use them why i use them so check us out thanks guys video i just want to introduce you to a new little venture that i'm going on and it's called tees of the trade and this t-shirt i'm wearing is from the line there so it's an etsy shop and basically if you go on to etsy type in tees of the trade and you'll see all types of different t-shirts for all the different types of trades so we're still building it up but mainly i've got the plastering ones on there so this one here is a plastering top and this is my favorite one so i've got this done just for me this one and um, obviously you guys can go get it as well and um, we do mugs we've got more stuff coming as well as far as hats go hoodies jumpers and more different designs of t-shirts as well so listen if you want to check it out you can go to the instagram page that's where we keep posting our new designs and new uh, products that we're putting up and also if you go to the etsy shop Obviously, they're all on there, and uh, like I say, you can order on there. So feel free to go check it out. Cheers for that, guys.